Hey, what's up everybody? Matt here from MyRawIntuition.com and we are here for episode four of the Raw Misfit Show. Welcome back. I am going to be joined with by my co-host, uh, Misfit Vegan, my partner in Rind. And so we're going to talk about the top benefits and the kind of the pros and the cons of being 100% raw vegan in today's society. So I'm sure if you have attempted the raw vegan diet, um, you have understood or you've experienced the the going against the grain of society, right? So there's a lot of different things that play into, you know, this lifestyle, uh, social factors, financial factors, um, you know, mindset factors, all these different things that you have to take into account. And so we're going to talk about Jeanette and myself, the pros and the cons that each of us have experienced with trying to be a 100% raw vegan person in a non-vegan, but especially non-raw world. All right, so let's bring Jeanette on the show and get the party. Guys, this is 30 minutes of a topic discussion and then 30 minutes of a Q&A. So there she is. Hey, what's up, Jeanette? Oh, hello, beautiful beings. What is up? What's up, Matt? Hey, not much. Just uh, getting everybody, uh, you know, giving everybody the down low on what's going to go on today. And so, yeah, 30 <laughs> minutes of... Oh, I'm going to try to do my background real quick. I don't think I... I definitely can't. Okay, fuck it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, um, but great intro. Wow. I was like, I want to go to this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So so I hope everybody has their questions all ready to go because uh, the second half of the show... Jeanette and I are going to be answering those questions. So make sure you leave them in the comments box or the comments section, and we will be sure to get to as many of those as we can. So, so uh, yeah, should we, should we get going here? Yeah, I recommend everybody gets their journal and a pen. Honestly, not, not because of anything that we're going to say, but they might have some insights and inspiration and something might click and lead to something else. And like, I always take notes every single week, Matt, because mm -hmm. like, I just learned so much from you and from all my friends. Like if you're not learning from your friends, then you have the wrong friends. So yeah. get the paper and let's go. Yeah, no, and totally. I'll talk, Matt, let's go. All right, let's do it, let's do it. Okay, so do you want to start off with uh, your first, do you want to start with pros or cons? I want to start so with the pros. But thanks for asking. I want to focus on the cons, but uh, because everybody knows the benefits, but I do want to start with that because there's way more pros than cons, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. So yeah, uh, what, what would you say is your first pro? Now, are you ranking these like most pro to least pro or do you have, do you have or are they just random? Um, they are, oh, <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, they are random. They're okay. Random. All right, cool. My first pro, the, my first benefit that I experienced was energy. So when I was 16 years old, I was diagnosed with having chronic fatigue. And I was in bed. I literally couldn't get out of bed. I was so tired all the time. And now I'm almost 40 years old and I have so much energy. I barely slept last night. You know, life still happens. You still have stress and work and life, but I can handle it so much better and I have so much more energy because of the raw food lifestyle. So if you're somebody who is dealing with low energy, 80% uh, of your digestion is going to food and digesting it. And so um, perhaps you wanna try a raw food lifestyle. Yeah, it, it, that's not the fire alarm, is it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, no, no, an ambulance. Okay, good, good. <laughs> All right. PTSD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, great, great first pro. I'm gonna start off with, so now again, kind of like the last time we did this, I wanted, I, I tried to come up with, with ones that I didn't think there was a good chance that, you, I mean, you might come up with some of these, but I'm gonna start with uh, increased body awareness is one of my first pros that I'm gonna bring up here. So one thing that I really noticed when I have gone, you know, when I've been raw is that 
<clears throat> my body awareness is so much more sensitive. So I notice so many more things while I'm raw than I do when I'm eating, you know, back when I was eating a, a stimulating, um, bogging down, just heavy, toxic diet, right? So things that, of course, you know, digestion, I notice when I eat something that's wrong, you know, I eat something that doesn't really go with my body, it lets me know like really fast, right? So before I used to be able to eat, you know, pizza and beer and chicken wings and all these, you know, body parts and things with a uh, milkshake and all this stuff. And I wouldn't even, you know, it wouldn't even phase me. You know, I, I would, I was just at such a low level of sensitivity that it, I didn't even notice. But now it's like, if I were to eat, you know, some sort of toxic processed food, I would feel sick almost immediately. Right. Because my my body's awareness, my body's sensitivities have elevated so much that now my body is able to let me know very fast when I'm doing something that doesn't align with health and with, you know, it's its best condition. So so that's my first pro to living this lifestyle is that you are much more aware when you start to get off track because your body is going to let you know exactly when that happens. Wow, yeah, definitely didn't have that on my list, but that is a big one for me too, for sure. I didn't know how bad I felt until I went raw and I felt so much better. Um, okay, I just wanna let everybody know that there is a um, question section below. So you see the question mark, guys? Put your, put your questions there. I promise this week we will get to them um, because Madhouse wants to know about vitamin B, but Specifically, let us know which vitamin B you're interested in and we'll talk about it. My number two benefit to, and by the way, in case you just joined us, we're talking about the top pros and cons of living a raw vegan lifestyle. Specifically today, we're talking about raw. Every week, we usually just focus on being a healthy vegan, which is mostly raw. But this week, I really, um, I, or oh, Matt's hosting, Matt really wanted to... <laughs> Matt really wanted to focus on the raw thing because it's very rare that somebody is raw for over a decade, you know, like that's not easy to find. So we're both raw vegan for 11 years now. Okay, so um, my number two benefit is clear skin. And this is the reason I went raw. I went vegan for the animals. Uh, but I went raw vegan for this animal. Okay, because I had really bad skin my whole life. And I just it's hard for me. I was writing the notes for this show, guys, and I'm trying to express, I wanted to express to you guys the emotions that I felt as a kid and a teenager and in my 20s. I was so, because of my skin, I was so depressed. I was so, I felt so ugly. I felt so unworthy. I felt so, I wrote down disgusting, sad. I just was embarrassed to be seen. Okay, and it took me so long to get over that, even though my acne cleared up. It was mentally still there and so if you're someone who is suffering right now overweight or has acne or is embarrassed to be seen i can absolutely relate it took me it took me five years i was on social media until i posted a photo of myself i started my social media in 2012 my personal one and 2017 is when i posted a photo of myself because i was still so embarrassed so yeah I cleared my skin and I ne don't wear any makeup on my face because if I do, I'll break out immediately. And uh, this is how we're supposed to be looking. You see how beautiful and clear our skin is? Seriously, we're all supposed to look like, have perfect, beautiful, clear skin, all of us. So that's my number two benefit. Yeah, definitely. I, and that's, that, is one of, that is one of my benefits that I've received as well, but I don't have that on my list, so that's good. All right, so my second benefit, my second pro, um, I'm going to go with mental, spiritual, and intuitive elevation. All right. So before, again, I was so disconnected from spirituality, from myself, my own intuition, and, you know, what was best for me. And so getting into this diet and lifestyle has really, truly connected me with my spirituality, which, again, before zero i was like the you know i didn't have really any i wouldn't say that i was spiritual at all so now i'm just so you know connected with uh the environment i i just enjoy being out in nature so much more um a connection with god or you know whatever source or you know 
creative energy that you ascribe to. Um, and so that is something that has been just such a, a dramatic change for me in my life. And, and really, you know, I, I always tried to be a good person, but now it's just like, I'm just so much more in alignment with, you know, doing what is right, doing what is right for myself, doing what is right for others, and really just trying to improve the planet and improve myself, of course. So, so that is something that I have really experienced is just that elevation in uh, spirituality, my intuition, and, you know, things like that. So every time Matt says intuition, I'm writing it down. It's just a game that I like to play. Uh, he said it three times already. Um, okay, number three is uh, similar to Matt's. Uh, it lifted my lifelong depression. So mm -hmm. one of the biggest benefits for me personally, going raw and why I will stay raw or high raw for the rest of my natural born life is because afterlife too, but you know, I don't want to make any harsh rash decisions. I don't know what this, they're going to be serving, you know? And so uh, it has helped me with my anxiety, my severe, severe social anxiety, um, my mental, overall mental well being, and my depression. Okay. I'm very sensitive, as most of, I feel like most people are very sensitive and they are suffering. And I was suffering tremendously um, from depression and, um, the raw foods diet for sure was a big part of that healing. So that's my number three. And uh, we'll just keep this going because yeah, I like this feed, Matt. This is good. Yeah, this is good. Uh, Sherry's always getting on us to keep our short, our answers short and precise. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try and honor that. Um, Sherry all right. gave me a, a Matt, our manager gave me a um, Fitbit something to, what is this called? I don't know, but something to play with. So I <laughs> oh yeah, uh, a Fitbit fidget spinner or something like that yes yes <laughs> yeah nice okay so my third pro would be an increased ability to attract the things that you want in your life so that is something also that i have really experienced such a increase in the synchronicities that i have in my life and really i see that as something that i am you know putting out positive energy into the world being focused on what I truly want in my life and the environment and, or God just putting that in my path to, you know, take or not take. And, you know, I think that is something that uh, is a big reason why. So before I was so um, self-critical, I was, I was, you know, somewhat positive, but still I had a lot of negative thought patterns. And so, once I, you know, got into this lifestyle, it was just like um, a fog had lifted, a blanket had been taken off of my, my spiritual self, I guess. And I was just able to really tap into positivity and, and finding the silver lining in so many different situations and using my challenges to better myself, looking at them as opportunities. And so putting myself in more of a positive, you know, love-based frequency, I've, I've been able to bring in more opportunities and, and, you know, relationships and things like that. Um, and so it's almost effortless to start bringing in, you know, positivity into your life once you get onto this diet and raise your frequency. And so that is something that I did not experience quite as much as I do now. Absolutely. Guys, did you see all those smart words that Matt used instead of intuition? I'm, I'm going to stop. Okay, number four for me is, is um, I rarely, rarely get sick anymore. Rarely. Okay, so I wrote down, I used to get sick every few months to the point where I needed antibiotics every single time in order to get better. Now, I have not taken antibiotics, which also means anti-life in Latin. I have not taken antibiotics for over 12 years now. And I took it every single year, multiple times a year as a kid, in my teenage years and in my 20s. And so I, you know, these Z-Packs, I literally, Matt, I wouldn't leave the doctor's office without one because like I'm a, a control freak. And I was like, I know what I know what I need to heal. So I'm not, and the doctor would be like, no, you just need some rest. And I was like, no, I need antibiotics. I'm not going, I'm not leaving. And I would literally demand them. So. Mm. It took me uh, 11 years to um, detox. But anyway, um, and we'll talk about that soon, guys. Detox is coming up soon. Yes. 
because um, it's not uh, an overnight thing. But that is my number four pro. Very nice. Okay. Uh, my my next one is is a you know it might be kind of funny to some people, but uh, you know it's really actually a serious topic that I think too many people don't take serious enough. But I know Jeanette's not one of those people, and that is amazing poops, right? <laughs> so, you know, back in the day before I got into this lifestyle, I was so constipated. I would I would go to the bathroom. I'd have bowel movement every you know two, three, or four days sometimes. So that is something that really was a big change for me once I got into this lifestyle and started eating more high fiber, high water, high, you know, antioxidants and, you know, those living foods that really start to move things through you in an appropriate manner, you know? So I go to the bathroom two or three times a day now um, and they are amazing. It's like you're in, you're out and it's, you know, it's how it's supposed to be. So we see all the animals out there that just, you know, take a squat and they're good. You know, other, and then there's people that you might go into a public bathroom and you hear the consequences of their discomfort, you know, the, com the discomfort that they're, you know, displaying that you can hear. Um, and that's not how, we should be evacuating our body, right? So uh, bowel movements are definitely something that uh, I have experienced a huge benefit uh, from being on this lifestyle. And uh, I know many, many other people that could say the same. Yeah, great. What a great one. I did not write that down, but literally this was me too. I was constipated my whole life. And, um, you know, it's funny how life, it, like if you're not willing to grow and change and learn life is going to kick your butt until you surrender and yeah. so when you when you just describe people in the bathroom like struggling and being in pain and like it's so uncomfortable and like yeah because life is trying to tell you you're doing something wrong boo-boo mm -hmm. you know like life is trying to talk to you but are we listening okay my number five is zero body odor okay so i i wrote down i used to Stank. <laughs> but now, okay, let me be honest with you guys. If I eat a 100% fruit diet, so I know that when I go to Woodstock Fruit Festival or like I remember when I had my friends uh, Kyle and my ex-friend Frank over last year, um, they stayed with me and we didn't eat any salads. We didn't eat anything besides fruit and we had durian every night for dinner. And even though durian stinks, mm -hmm. every day we worked out and I, didn't, I don't wear deodorant, I didn't smell at all. I literally smelled like fruit. So if you're eating a 100% fruit diet, you will not need deodorant. Now, I'm going to be honest. I smell slightly after working out if I eat garlic and spices, you know. But I mean, like, I don't wear, if I don't wear deodorant, I'm saying, you know, I, I wear deodorant sometimes. <laughs> I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to impress Matt. But <laughs> um, I want you guys to know that if you stink, there's something wrong. If you stink and you wear deodorant, especially, because I'm talking about I don't wear deodorant, okay? And um, shameless plug. <laughs> shameless <laughs> plug time, Matt. If you'd like to find out why you stink and uh, natural deodorants, you can get the Robbing and Beauty book. I'll leave the link below. Thank you. Mm. Hi highly recommended. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Bye. That's it? Okay. That's it. All right. Was that your fourth or fifth? That was your fifth, right? Fifth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna finish my pros list or benefits list off with uh, health freedom. All right, so health freedom is maybe the biggest benefit I think there is to this lifestyle. And I mean, it goes a little bit more than just getting into the lifestyle, but just educating yourself about the power of fruits and vegetables, about the power of holistic, healthy living and just understanding the power that you personally have over the health outcomes in your life. So before I used to just think, you know, health was, you know, just a random, you know, accidental thing. You know, it's just something that you either get lucky with and you stay healthy or you get unlucky and you pick up some disease, right? Now I completely understand that I am in charge of what happens with my health, you know, for the vast majority of things. Of course, we can be exposed to toxins in our environment that we're not responsible for, but there are ways that we can minim minimize that exposure. 
if we're aware of, you know, where those toxins generally are, but we can do the best we can. And by doing that, we will be in the driver's seat of our health. And we understand that health is not an accident. Health is a consequence of healthy living and doing the right thing for your human vessel. All right, so that is one of the most empowering benefits that I think anybody could have, especially in this toxic, sick society that we live in, is to understand the power that we truly have over what happens with our health. I agree. And um, I have a bonus one because I just, I, I want it to be better than you. Um, <laughs> you become more attractive in every way. People, mm. peop not just physically, people are attracted to you more easily when you are 100% raw because it's very different. And while different scares people, it also intrigues them, okay? Most people don't have the balls to be different. So if you wanna be more attractive in every way, you know, not important, but 100% raw might be for you. Okay, let's go on to the, the negatives. Okay, oh, that's right. Man, we got negatives going on here. Okay, yeah. so. Yeah, it's it's a little difficult to to come up with five actually, but uh, I, I did it. Okay. All right. So you want me to start off? Sure. Okay. All right. So my first con that I wrote down was an increased risk of falling into the ego trap. Right. So if you are so obsessed with being one hundred percent raw, just because your ego will be hurt or offended that you maybe included in some consciously cooked foods because you just, your ego has to have that label, right? You want to be labeled as a raw vegan. You want to be able to say you're a hundred percent raw vegan. And I think that is where it gets, a lot of people get tripped up is when they let their ego get involved and they, they do things for the sake of, how they look to other people versus how they are, you know, a, a practical way to keep their body healthy for the long term. All right. And so that is why I think that we, we need to get away from the ego driven, uh, you know, habits that lead us to, you know, a lot of times it leads a lot of people to, uh, uh, you know, falling off the path. So be, be humble, you know, be practical with your lifestyle, and don't let your ego drive your habits to a point where it gets you into trouble. Yeah, that's my number five. Um, I can't, I just realized, Matt, that I can't see the comments because I touched the screen like yeah. five minutes ago. I'm really upset about that. Can I go yeah. out and check in? Sure. Thank you, Matt. I'm sorry, but it really bothers me. Oh, yeah, I no, I hear you. Matt. Hold on, I'm leaving. All right, get out of here. All right, now we'll see. I might let her back in. We might just do the show with me from, from this point on because, you know, I know that's what you guys want. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. All right, we'll let Jeanette back in. Here she comes. She's the face of the show, really. I, I, can't, I can't let her not be in here, so. <laughs> there she is. All right, we're, we're back. We're complete. Okay, Matt, okay. The, we were just talking about the ego. <laughs> yeah, I know. See, this is why it's on my list because I got to work on it. Because you're 100 because you're raw. Okay, yeah, yeah. What's up? okay, so my number one con, thank you for that, Matt. Um, now I can see Sherry's here. Okay, my number <laughs> one con is that you cannot go back in lifestyle. Okay, I wanted to make the show, I mean, Matt chose the topic, but it was my idea. Um, <laughs> I, w I wanted to make the show because it's something we're not going to focus on too much on this show because our goal is to help you increase the amount of raw, fresh, juicy, delicious, ripe fruit and veggies, right? Um, that's the goal, whether it's 51% or 100% raw, I don't care. But this show is important for the people specifically that want to be 100% raw. There are some people out there. It's a very small niche, this specific show. And I just want to say, it is true. The body adjusts and becomes accustomed to whatever you do. I cannot, and I won't speak for Matt, but I'm pretty sure I can. I cannot just eat anything now. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's not possible. You cannot go back. So what I recommend is if you want to be 100% raw, you get really clear on why 
you get really clear on why and you commit because you can, if you're serious, you cannot go back. And Fre Dr. Fred Bishi talks about this all the time. If, the, if he ever calls me back, <laughs> <laughs> then I'll talk to him about it too. Because um, I just can't, I can't eat a vegan pizza. I don't, I, if, if I try, it's going to be hell to pay tomorrow. And I don't want to risk that. I have a life. I mean, I have like a job. I don't have a life. I have a job. I got, I got to work. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, you can't go back. If you're serious and you do this for a long amount of time, you're not going to be able to go back. And it's a good thing because the body doesn't want that shit that you, it's actually an amazing benefit, Matt, in a way. Because I literally can't, I'm not tempted by crap because I'm just like, oh no, that's going to make me like really sick. Yeah. So yeah, that's my number one con to the raw vegan lifestyle. Perfect. Okay. My number two con would be that it takes more planning, right? Than, than a typical vegan or just a, even a high raw vegan diet. Um, you know, if you're going to be 100% raw, you have to make sure that you have ripe fruit on hand, right? So you have to make sure you're planning your fruit ripening correctly. And Jeanette talks a lot about this on her channel. So go check out her videos. And that's uh, a special thing. Yes, there you go. Yep. So yeah, I mean, especially, you know, things like bananas, of course, you got to have enough ripe spotted bananas, and then you got to have some green ones or yellow ones to make sure that you don't run out because you can't eat all those spotted bananas at one time. Right. So and then mangoes, you got to make sure they're ripe at one time. So you just got to make sure that you have enough ripe fruit at the period of time that you, you know, need it to eat and, and keep that going for several days at a time. Um, so yeah, that would be my second con is that it just, you know, for the average person that, that doesn't want to put, you know, that much effort and planning into what they're going to eat. Um, that, that would be a con I think for, for a lot of people. So, yeah. Great point, Matt. That's not on my list. That is such a good point for the average person. Yes. But who the fuck wants to be average? That's True. Raw. Okay, and Matt is so right. You're gonna have to plan and prepare better. Let me just tell you guys a secret. Let me put you on to how Mr. Vegan lives. I don't go anywhere without fruit. I literally don't even go on live without fruit. I was just telling my roommate, I was like, she was like, why are you washing grapes? You're gonna eat during the live. I was like, what if I get hungry? I don't know. I might go to McDonald's. Like I won't be, <laughs> I have to be prepared. I literally bring fruit everywhere. I will go, if I go for a walk around the block, I will put oranges in my bag. If I do laundry, this is extreme, but I will literally bring some fruit to the laundry room because you never know. There might be a fire. I'll have to run out. Okay, as we saw last week, there might be emergency. I'll have to run out and then I'll be stranded and then I'll have to eat some motherfucking bread. Fuck that. I'll have <laughs> instead. So that, that is amazing, Matt. Okay, let me just calm down. Let me get my <laughs> fidget. So, <laughs> so now number uh, two is the detox is real. Mangoes in a storm. Sherry, I found the mango that I lost. I lost a mango, but it was in a bag. Um, I found it, Sherry. Okay, so anyway, um, so uh, the detox is real. Now, this is a con because it's not fun. It's not a party in your pants. I don't know why I said that. That's weird. But um, I want to let you guys know that when you go raw, and if you're serious about it, you will release the old, decaying, toxic, fecal matter that is poisoning you from the inside out. Now, I highly recommend you get a colonic. Don't be like me. Uh, I suffered for a good month in 2011. I still remember it because I couldn't talk. When I went raw, I went overnight raw vegan. Now, you know, Matt and I are, are very, very similar, but I'm glad there is one difference. At least we know we're not twins separated at birth. He went slowly raw, transitioned over a six month year period mm -hmm. six months or a year yeah it's somewhere between there i don't i don't remember the exact amount but okay. um and so that is we'll do a show on that what's the what's the best way to do it because uh, mm -hmm. certainly i didn't do it the right way probably matt's way is better i almost i felt like i was dying everybody at my job thought i had aids i couldn't say one sentence without coughing i couldn't sleep i was coughing nonstop. i had mucus coming out of every orifice sorry for the uh visual but um it is what it is. I finally, my boyfriend, f 
finally at the time convinced me to get a colonic. I was like, I'm not putting anything up my butt. Thank you. And, um, you know, <laughs> it's just that's awkward too. Okay, we'll cut that part. But <laughs> it's not water, guys, it's not a colonoscopy. It's not a procedure. You don't go to sleep. It's a tube with two tubes inside of it. One has water, and one is empty for the crap to come out. And after my first colonic, let me tell you, I had a spiritual experience because I felt so much lighter. I stopped coughing, my skin cleared up. I felt like a brand new person. It's almost like you're taking a bath in a dirty bathtub your entire life. And all of a sudden, somebody comes along with a tube, puts it up your butt now, puts it in the tub and drains the bad water and puts in fresh, clean water. Like, oh my God, that's literally mm -hmm. how I felt. And oh, thank you so much, Hoppy Mummy. I appreciate you. Um, and so my thing is the detox is real and I um, we don't I don't want I don't know what the timeline is because it's already 1230. But um, Matt, can you just touch real quick on your detox? Did you have severe uh, detox symptoms um, during that long transition, the proper way to do it? Um, so not I mean, I would have like the little bit of a headache here and there. Um, I would be tired a lot. You know, there was a lot of days that I know I was I was kind of fatigued. Um, but the biggest detox that I had was after I had been already, you know, getting pretty clean with my diet and, and doing, you know, a lot of fruit and a lot of, uh, you know, getting hydrated. I went to a birthday party with a, for a friend and at that restaurant, I had fried green beans because it was still, I thought it was, you know, just a pretty simple thing. And I, yeah. And, and I literally could not leave the bathroom that night I went home. I woke up in the middle of the night and from that point on, I was in the bathroom because I'm going to tell you, I had to clean my sheets and. <laughs> well, that was a little too much. Information. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. But uh, Hey, I'm just letting people know you, you go too far off track after you have started to treat your body correctly and it's going to react. Right. So this goes back to my, my, one of my pros and that's it, he heightened uh, sensitivity with your body. <clears throat> and so, I mean, Again, for like a week straight, I, I was on the toilet. So I'll leave it at that so I don't, you know, scare people off. But, uh, you know, so that was my biggest amount of detox. But other than that, I just had, you know, a few headaches and just days where I just felt like laying around. You know what's interesting, Matt? I just had an aha moment from what you were saying. People are shitting the bed, <laughs> just like you. Yeah. And, um, let's use that clip. Let's repurpose that clip. I, um, I'd love to. And, um, they have stomach aches and diarrhea and constipation and disgusting smelly farts and like all types of major issues while they're eating whatever they want. So you might as well, <laughs> might as well go raw, fuck up once in a while, yeah. shake the bed like Matt, and then <laughs> you'll never have to go back to that. Because seriously, I, we were sick, but like 11 years ago, like I haven't been sick for 11 years. I mean, yes, I've gotten a cold for a few days. Yes. I got COVID. Oh shit, we can't say that. Whatever. <laughs> I got I got the vid twice. Okay, so I was like down for a few days, you know, but like um that's it, you know? I'm not constantly suffering. People are suffering, Matt. Yeah. I just realized that. They're suffering. So like the detox is amazing because you suffer, yes, but then you good. You good. So okay. Okay, focus, Jeanette, focus. And is it my turn or your turn, Matt? Um, I think it's mine because you, you're, I just commented when you asked me about the detox. But you started though. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm the host here. Let me, let me run things. All right. So my next con is less food security. All right. So not everybody's going to care about this, but just in case you might think that, you know, someday that you're not going to be able to go to the grocery store for a few days, you know, in the last two years, it seems like that's a more possibility than ever. So I would say food security being raw is not going to be your best bet because all your food is super perishable and you could run out of food pretty quickly if, if you can't go to the store and restock. So um, for me personally, you know, again, all these cons are two-sided, right? You can turn them into a positive. So don't be like, you know, hearing us talk about cons and think that you're not going to do this. You can turn them into a positive and use it for, you know, educating yourself and bettering yourself to, 
to do this lifestyle in a way where you can kind of minimize some of these things. So for me, what I do is I buy a ton, like big 35 pound pails of sprouting seeds. So sprout, you know, lentils and green peas and, you know, other different seeds that I can sprout and they're, they're ready to eat in just a couple days. So, you know, God forbid that ever happens, which hopefully it never does. Right. So, but just if you want to be prepared a little bit, you can have, uh, you know, a stockpile of, of clean water and a bunch of sprouting seeds, or, you know, even if you're not planning on eating beans and legumes and potatoes and things like that, you can have some on hand, maybe, you know, potatoes probably won't last that long, but um, beans, lentils, things like that, you can have on hand just in case you know, you have, they're kind of backup foods and they're still, you know, healthy whole plant foods. So um, that is something I would say to help with this con, if you want to consider it that way, to this lifestyle. So just make sure you're not putting yourself in a situation where you could run out of food within a, you know, a couple of days. Yeah, that's a good one, Matt. Uh, let's do a whole episode on the zombie apocalypse that is inevitable. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to stay raw. Me too. I don't, we, we live like two days apart. Like I would have to drive for two days to get to Matt. I don't have no, no. like shit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do a whole episode on that. I gotta be prepared. I do have water though. I do have a stockpile of water. Um, yep. Okay, and then great tip. I Yeah, beans, quinoa, generator, yep. generator. Okay, um, dates. Yeah, dates and dried apricots. The problem is Tessa that I can't have those things in the house. Mm. I have dates, they're in the freezer and I use them for dressings, but like I can't stockpile dates in my house because I get, I have a problem. Oh, Wendy's here. What's up, Wendy from the Dutch hey, Festival. I can't wait to be featured there one day. Okay. <laughs> so, so number three is the, oh, this is the big one. Okay. Social aspect of eating. Okay. So here we go. This is important. And what Matt said is absolutely true. We're sharing the cons because there is always a solution to every problem, but there are problems. You're still gonna have problems. And yes, there are cons to everything in life. Everything, if you win the lottery, there's negative parts of that too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like, and honestly, eating a raw vegan diet feels like the lottery to me. Yeah. Now I literally feel and, and, and have the health uh, and like, I'm, you know, like I'm working on getting the body of my dreams and it's all because of the way I eat. I would never have this much energy. So, you know, anyway, okay, focus. Social aspect of eating. I wrote down the judgment, feeling alone, feeling like an outsider. It is real. It can be very lonely. Uh, even me, you know, I have a lot of friends online that eat 100% raw, but in my personal life, in my real life, I don't know one person here in Miami that eats 100% like me. I have some raw friends, my ex-business partner was raw vegan and we get together sometimes, but she eats, you know, like she's dehydrated food and like she'll eat cooked food every once in a while and she'll, you know, splurge. She doesn't eat just like me. So if we go to a restaurant, she'll eat something there. And I can't, I literally, the only restaurant that I really can eat at is the one in my dreams. Okay. That's why I want to open a restaurant so that I can go there and get half a watermelon and my best friend, um, Awa can get some amazing, delicious vegan food and we can eat together because it's so unfair. I'm not a victim, right? I just want to let you guys know it's so unfair the way this world is set up. It is not set up for health at all. It's set up for profit and greed. And there's nothing we can do about that. We're going to have to work with it. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to share with you guys um, an experience that I had. Oh, we're running out of time. Hmm. I think we should extend the show to eight hours, Matt. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so <laughs> last time I went to a restaurant uh, that I, there was nothing for me. Um, I, it was so lonely. I'll never do it again. So basically my best friend is French American, Franco American, as she says, and um, if that's real. So um, she wanted to go to a French vegan restaurant in New York and I invited a bunch of people for a surprise birthday party. And I knew they didn't have anything on the menu for me. Like there was no salads. French people don't give a fuck. They not even fuck salads, okay? And so uh, everybody went, we're all there. And 
they ordered a bunch of stuff and everybody starts freaking out because this, the food is so good and they're sharing it with each other. We ordered, they ordered all the dishes and they're all sharing it and I'm sitting there. I ordered an orange juice. That's all they had. And of course I had my own fruit. So I was like peeling oranges and dipping them in the orange juice, like trying to do some type of fun, fondue situation. And I was just like, oh, this is so, and they of course were like, Jeanette, you have to try this. It's so, and I'm just like, I will never do this again, ever. Um, it was quite lonely. I'll never forget that. And you know, I did it for my best friend, but like, you have to take care of yourself first. So now knows that that's not that's not something I can do now I bring my fruit to a restaurant um like and I uh I ask the waiter or the maitre d if I can eat it I have my own plate my own knife my own fruit and they always let me eat it and they always ask and they're always like so friendly and curious and um so yeah um I'm gonna leave it at that I'm not gonna ask Matt any questions <laughs> because the Perfect. All right. So actually, my that was going to be my next one as well was isolation. Um, so I'll just kind of touch on that a little bit. Um, as for mine. So yeah, I, uh, you know, the potential for being more isolated, clearly, even as a vegan, people feel a little isolated, but more so, you know, recently, it's been a lot more easy for people to be vegan in regular society. Um, but raw vegan still isn't one of those lifestyles that really meshes well with most things in our world today. So um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just, you know, and I don't want to sound egotistical here, but it's, you know, you raise your standards higher than most other people have, right? So your standards for your life are, you know, where you're focusing on your immediate and your long term health and your you know ability to have an impact on the world whereas most people are just looking for immediate um you know satisfaction and stimulation to just you know quench their dopamine you know needs um and so they you know that's where it it can you know people say raw vegans are egotistical because you know they think they're better than people but that's not that's not necessarily true it yeah <laughs> I don't think I'm better than people, Matt. I know <laughs> I'm better than people. And it's not that I'm better. I'm just eating better. Sorry, yeah. why would you eat? So I must be better. Continue. Yeah. Hey, all right. Fair point. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's just that, you know, I hope that doesn't, um, you know, be a, an issue for people where it causes too much turbulence in their relationships. You know, hopefully that people can get into this lifestyle and, you know, just, you really just got to focus on yourself, right? Just like Jeanette said earlier, you got to put yourself first and you have to, you know, understand and have a mindset that you're your first priority, you know, not to sound selfish, but you are your first priority. Just like they say on the airplane, you got to put the mask on yourself first and then you can help other people. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your diet and same thing with your life. You have to be able to put yourself in a position to be healthy and, you know, clear headed and energetic and all these different things so that you can help other people and you can be a light for, you know, to, to get rid of a lot of the darkness in this world. So that's all I'll say about that. Great point. You know, I was speaking to Ava yesterday. Ava loves raw is her uh, YouTube and her Instagram. I would highly recommend everybody follow her. She's amazing. Yeah. She's raw vegan for five years now. Her husband and her kids are not. Okay, and what she does is she makes her food first and she eats her food while she's making her family's food. She comes first. And guess what? I just want to remind everyone that if you put other people first, just just realize that they're not putting you first. So what the what are you doing? Because if yeah. they were putting you first, they would be healthy. They would go raw. Okay, mm -hmm. so how about you start to love yourself enough to put yourself first. You're in your a relationship with yourself, number one. You're going, you were born alone and you're going to die alone. And it's a beautiful thing, okay? Because that means you're number one and you can only help people as much as you love yourself. So great point, I'm gonna move on, but somebody had a comment. My husband mourned my way of eating, thinking we could never go out to eat again. It took a lot of time to assure him we could and that I'd always find something to eat or bring myself. Yeah, and lucky for me, I don't, I don't date, so I'm good. <laughs> Uh, that's, I'm good. 
but um yeah that must be complicated um i don't i can't even imagine um okay number four is the cost okay so let's be real it is an investment let's just be real it is an investment but you have to understand that you are going to be shifting the money that you're spending over to the pharmacy f-a-r pharmacy okay you, got, you caught that i got it yeah okay. I didn't know you didn't. Okay, okay so uh, you're going to be shifting the money. So instead of doctors, instead of medication, instead of um, makeup, instead of uh, alcohol, alcohol. Thank you. Instead of um, what are things that people do, Matt? I don't fucking Netflix. I don't I'm, know. I'm so disconnected from reality now. It's like, I... <laughs> what do people spend their money on, guys? They go to the bars. You know, they go to r restaurants. Um, you know. I suppose, I don't know. <laughs> oh, like Louis Vuitton bags and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like animal cruelty products and shit. And let me just tell you right now, that shit is not inexpensive. You go out to eat, you go to a bar, you're spending $100. You know how much fruit and veggies you can get for $100? So like, let's just understand that there's money, but it's the priority that we have to, um, that we have to change. And I wrote down, it's not a sacrifice, it's an investment in your future and in your DNA. Especially if you wanna have kids in the future, uh, what are you doing? You gotta take care of yourself, okay? And so if you wanna lose something, lose money, not time. Yeah. You do not have time to waste, okay? You can always get more money. You will never get back more time. And if you're somebody who has kids, or who has loved ones, I don't know what that's like, uh, or has a family, <laughs> or has, um, no, I have my fruit, guys, I'm okay, I have my fruit. Um, so wait, so what was I saying? Oh yes, if you wanna be here as long as possible, you wanna, you wanna make sure that you do the things you have to do, which is take care of yourself, take care of your health. Eating 100% raw is not uh, necessary, but eating a high raw diet is if you wanna be healthy. There's no way around it. It's honestly the only way, in my opinion, to be uh, a healthy human. So that is my number four. Yes, it can, be, it can be costly. But again, how is that? That's not a con because we're just saving money somewhere and putting it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, reallocation. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> um, so we got a, a comment here from, from Tessa. It's especially hard when someone who means well wants to take me to a vegan restaurant and I don't want to go because I'd rather eat the food that makes me feel best, fruit. Yeah, I know. That, that is one of the things that it can be difficult when people want to take you to a restaurant or they want to make you food. Um, you know, I, it's, it is tough when people want to give me food, like, like a coworker or something. And they're like, oh, you love fruit or you love, you love uh, you know, plant-based meals. So they like bring me some sort of like soup they made. And I'm like, I, I'm, I can't eat that. <laughs> oh my so. Yeah, um, so many stories of this because I used to run a raw vegan establishment in New York. And so I had like a lot of employees and we had a lot of stores. So I used to go to the stores every day, check on people, you know, just show up, be cute, eat some fruit and leave. And yeah. they would, people would always buy me fruit, right? Because they know I love fruit. But Matt, oh my God, it was so horrible. One time, and usually I'm like, oh my God, I'm so grateful. But one time I remember this sweet, sweet employee. She was amazing. She got me cut up mangoes in a plastic container and the mangoes were literally like white almost. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. She was like, try one. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just ate. She's like, no, 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 please try one. I want to take a video of you eating fruit. I think you're yeah. amazing and you taught me so much and everything. And <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it. I was like, fuck uh, it, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm not putting nothing in my body that I don't love. I'm sorry. And it's not right. That's going to cause indigestion, gas, and bloating. I'm not here for that. I'm here to, you know what, Matt. Matt knows what I'm here to do. I know. I know. All right. So, yeah, Tessa, that, that is a, a tough part. But that's just something we got to learn how to kind of, you know, maneuver through and, and do our best not to, you know, hurt other people's feelings, but still, you know, respect our own boundaries. Yes, Tessa, a uh, great other comment. And I just want to say that real quick, I feel you. She said she has to pretend to eat stuff sometimes. And I trust me, people have done birthday parties for me, they got like, 
date sweetened uh, cupcakes. They weren't raw, but they were date sweetened. And everybody thought I would eat it. And they like, it was a whole birthday thing. And I was like, oh my God, and guess what? Nah, I had fruit on me. So I just, I was like, I'm going to bring these home to my sister, but I don't eat that. I'm so sorry. It's not what you say, it's how you say it, Tessa. And I know it's hard. And what Matt just said is absolutely right. It is hard. But you know what is also hard? Being sick, being like everybody else, choose your heart. Let's continue. Sorry, Matt. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, let's see. I think my last con that I had on my list here was, you know, it kind of goes in with what we're talking about. It's a less enjoyable restaurant experience. You know, if you're somebody that likes to go to restaurants and, and yeah. be social like that. Um, for me, going to a restaurant, I, I don't go anymore almost ever. Like, I'll go to, uh, you know, a raw restaurant every once in a while if, you know, we feel like being crazy. But uh, <laughs> even that, it's not really that enjoyable because it's like, you know, you're spending, you know, raw vegan restaurants especially are expensive and you get such a small portion. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's a nut and seed based, you know, thing. And it just, you don't feel that great afterwards. So, uh, you know, just it's it makes it difficult, like, you know, like we've just been talking about in the last few minutes of, of socializing. Um, but yeah, just just going to a, finding a, a good restaurant. Like for me, I always look for organic raw vegan restaurants if I'm going to go to one because um, I'm very I'm very uh, particular about not eating conventional things, especially if I don't know where they came from. I don't know who prepared it. I don't know what they did back in that uh kitchen so are they using tap water to make their dressings and all this sort of stuff yeah like what are they using for these things i don't know so um when you're aware you it's it's more difficult to function in this society because you know of all the different things you have to look out for and you know when you're oblivious to all these things everybody you know it it just seems so much easier but it's it, that's a con but it's also you know, not a con at all, because you want to be aware of, you know, the potential uh, dangers or the potential things that could harm your microbiome, could harm, you know, anything in your body. So that would be my thing is just, you know, people that like restaurants are going to have a more difficult time finding one that they enjoy and one that's, you know, good quality. Yeah, yeah, really, uh, totally agree. Al Gornarin Masnana, she said that and thinking she's always at restaurants thinking that I have in my fridge some fruit at home and she could <laughs> yeah yeah but dude bring the fruit bring the fruit yeah like, you gotta eat and so we gotta stop being afraid to just cause a scene because it is what it is and you know bring your own knife bring your own bowls it, you know they will bring you a plate and, and stuff but you know just in case um and uh in case you have to eat outside the restaurant on the curb like I have done before bucket. Uh, by the way, I just want to say that if you are looking for, because Matt said, you go to a raw vegan restaurant, it's shit. It's nasty. It's nasty mm. stuff. And so if you're looking for really amazing recipes, I happen to have this book here. With me. And it's crazy because this book is actually half of it is just recipes. How do I show them? The literally the last part of the whole book is just all of Matt's favorite amazing recipes that he has been using uh, to stay healthy and eat amazing food for the last 11 years. In his book, you can get it on Amazon, hard copy, or you can get the ebook or the Kindle version. I had to take the Kindle version off. I have to get it, yes. you know, fixed up. So I just the paperback is available right now. I don't, I, maybe somebody has a Kindle, but I recommend the, the actual book. Because it's yeah. amazing. You want the recipes in your kitchen, and it's an amazing book. I highly recommend it. Um, okay, Matt, I want the payment right after this. <laughs> and right. so uh, let's wrap it up. Oh my God, I'm s I cannot believe it's one o'clock. Uh, we use the entire time. No, sorry, Matt. We I don't care if you have a life. We're answering the questions. <laughs> okay. All care. right. We, we can go over time here. Thank you. Um, let's see. We'll be quick. But my number five is your number one, which is I wrote down becoming obsessed with perfection and cleansing. And I'm actually going to do a whole entire like two hours next Friday on Fruity Fridays with that weirdo Ronnie. Nice. Uh, UK Fruit Festival. And so everybody come join me. I'm going to talk about cleansing, why it doesn't work and what will work instead. And the dangers of tr becoming obsessed with being perfect. The solution is to learn how to release control. 
We're never going to be perfectly clean and that's okay. We don't need to in order to thrive and be happy and healthy and have perfect health. Um, your lesson in life is to learn how to release control. If you're somebody who is like me and perhaps Matt as well, that we just, you know, we want the best. We want to. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, Sherry asked me to do it. Okay. We have. Uh... <laughs> We want to be the best. We want to eat the best. We want to feel the best. We want to know the best. We want to know everything. We want to be perfect and clean and everything. And you know, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, it's it's not really possible. So we've got to release that. Um, and then also, we just need to realize that we'll never be perfect. And then clean. You know, you're clean enough, okay? When you don't get sick anymore, okay? People often ask me, how do I know if I've detoxed enough? When you stop getting migraines, boo, when you stop getting sick, when you stop bloating, when you're not bloating anymore. And guess what, guys? Took me 11 years. So uh, I'm gonna do a whole fucking book on this. But I was bloated for 11 years as a raw vegan, okay? And 20, uh, 30, how old am I? 37 years as a human. But I still had some cleansing to do, whether that's emotional or physical. Uh, whatever it is, um, you know, you know that you are clean and you're healthy enough when you're not sick anymore. That's that. Yeah, great point. I completely agree. I love how you worded that too. I love because I yeah. remember somebody asked when when do you know you're done detoxing? And I was like trying to think of my answer to that. But you I like exactly how you said that. That's perfect. I'm sure you right. will it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I already did. I tweeted it. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's see. Uh, Lynn Marie is asking, what is the name of the book? The book is called 21 Day Raw Transformation Program. And yeah, you can get it on Amazon, like Jeanette said, or you can get it on my website, myrawintuition.com. Go check it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, let's get to the questions, Matt. You want me to read them or you want to read yeah. them? Yeah, go for it. Let's do a quick fire. Um, these questions I already answered on my page. So how about you just answer them? Nutritional yeast, get healthy. Um, no, but uh, I don't think having it here and there is really a problem for most people. Vitamix or Blendtec, which one is better? I like Vitamix, but I've never really consistently used a Blendtec, so I, I would personally go Vitamix. Okay, how do, how do smoothies and juices affect your tooth enamel? Mm. Um, fine. <laughs> I, I've been doing this for 11 years and uh, no issues. Okay, from 40. Is 40 here? Because I didn't see him. So I haven't seen him either. He must be um, at McDonald's. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding, 40. I know you're going to watch the rerun. I wanted to ask during your live stream, um, what do you think? Oh, my God, this is just the question I answered. Would be a, would be a good sign that I've completely detoxed my body from top. Nice. I, yeah, psychic. Robbie yeah. gets psychic. Mm-hmm. Pro number six. Question number two. Uh, I still have acne on my back after two months raw. Help. Mm. Yeah, well, I would I would say definitely, you know, just keep with the lifestyle. It's going to take a little while to clear all that out. Um, you know, make sure you're working your lymphatic system. Get your, you know, skin brush out. I know it's a little more difficult to skin brush on your back. Um, and especially if you've got uh, some acne going on, just be gentle. But uh, yeah, if you can, you know, do some rebounding or just like good you know, exercise every day, try to sweat, um, you know, that's, that's really, you just stay hydrated, eat fruit, eat greens, and, uh, you know, the body will work that out eventually. So I'm not sure if Jeanette has anything to add to that. I don't. I really enjoyed your, um, you're like, hmm, because I, I knew in my heart that you meant, hmm they think that they're going to be um, healthy after two months. Hmm. Right. I just told you it took me 11 years. Who asked this question? Yeah. Don't, don't send us this kind of question. <laughs> oh, don't do it. Do it to Matt. DM Matt all your questions like this. He'll be nice. Don't I'm nicer. What's wrong with eating too many dates, Matt? Hmm. Well, um, I mean, too many is kind of subjective. I don't know. I think it's different for every person. I would say, you know, I remember I just heard somebody talk about this. I don't even remember where it was, but they said, if you're eating, oh, I think it was uh, Eva. She was saying, if you're eating 50 dates, you know, you're not eating something else that, you know, is healthy. So, um, you know, I liked that. I liked that point. 
that uh, you don't want to overdo anything, you know, no matter what it is. Um, you know, personally, I don't, I think it's pretty difficult to overdo fruit, you know, and I don't think there's an upper limit really, unless you're really eating more calories than you need for your, you know, your metabolic rate. So I would say, you know, within context, um, you know, I wouldn't really put a number on it, but, you know, I don't know. You know if you're eating too much of something because it's too much. You yeah. Have, it's in the question. What's wrong with eating too many days? It's too much. That's what's yeah. wrong with you. It's too yeah. much. Too much of anything is a bad thing. I yeah. should know. My phone is amazing. I, I love my phone. I'm on my phone too much. That I know because I get headaches. I can't sleep. Uh, I'm not doing other things that I need to do. I'm like procrastinating on other things, blah, blah, blah. And so too many dates, it's like, um, hold on. Okay, sorry, I thought somebody was knocking on my door. Um, so there's uh, my yo old yoga teacher used to say in gardening, there's the moron principle. Some people think that if they put more on, more fertilizer or more things on, that's better. No, you need enough, not too much, not too little, just enough. And your yeah. body talking to you. Whoever asked this question, we need to start listening to our bodies more. Our cells are always talking, but are we listening? Louise Hay has a amazing meditation. She just likes to sit in silence every morning and ask herself, what do I need to know? What do I need to know? The universe will tell you, but you got to get quiet. You got to get off Instagram. Not right now. Not right now. After. But um, that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question number four. Last question, Matt, I promise. Okay. Is flax seed oil not good in your opinion? Personally, I would not use it generally, you know, for myself, I wouldn't use it. I don't use any oils and not because, you know, not from a dogmatic sense of view or sense of, um, you know, perception, but just for the fact that it is a fractionated food. It's a processed food. It's, um, you know, hundred percent fat, even though it is omega three rich, um, you know, it's still, I mean, especially because it's omega-3 rich, it's very volatile. So it will oxidize very quickly. So if you are somebody that thinks that you need flax oil, you better make sure that it is, uh, has been kept at a very cold, you know, uh, an appropriately cold temperature for, you know, pretty much the life that it's been an oil. But um, really, the best thing to do is to just blend up your own flax seeds because then you're getting all of those other, like we talked about uh, last episode or maybe two ago, these, all these foods are complex matrices, matrices, I don't know how the right correct is, word is that, but um, it's a matrix of different chemicals and elements that that really all work together our bodies were designed to work with these plant foods in our environment as they come so once we start extracting individual elements from those foods and putting it into the body it's never going to react and interact the same way as it was meant to so um, is it the worst thing is it going to make somebody unhealthy Probably not, but it, it really depends on how much they use and that sort of thing. But for me, I would just say stick with whole foods as much as possible. And that's the, the best way to go. Why are oils, why do oils oxidize very quickly, Matt? I, I, you were talking too fast. Okay, so, so omega-3s are much less stable because they are less saturated with hydrogen. And for whatever reason, that makes them go bad faster. So like uh, coconut oil is more saturated with hydrogen. And so that's why it is solid, um, you know, at room temperature, essentially. So, you know, it, I, I don't know, like down to the very detail as to why they oxidize faster, but I, it has something to do with how saturated they are. And that's why they use um, more omega-6 because that's much less or that is more saturated than the omega-3 oils. So they'll use like sunflower, safflower, cottonseed oil because they go bad much, um, you know, after a much longer point yeah. of time. So what, so, are the, what are the better, like the best of the worst oils? 
coconut oil? I would definitely stay away from coconut oil. It's the, one of the highest sources of saturated fat, which we want to stay away from um, in the plant kingdom. Um, I would stay away from, you know, cottonseed oil, which is used in a lot of things. It's not even, a, you know, it's, it's not even classified as a food. So they can, you know, put whatever chemicals they want on it, growing it, and don't, it doesn't have to be labeled. Um, I would stay away from canola oil, even though they say that's high in omega-3. I wouldn't touch that stuff. What oil, if you had to eat an oil, what, what oil would you pump, huh. put in your body? Uh, yeah, flax oil, I guess, would be up there. Flax oil or, you know, olive oil, I guess. But even that, you got to make sure you're getting a really good quality. You got to know because a lot of the olive oil at the store isn't even olive oil. It's a mixture of different oils that they label as olive oil. So, and, and they don't label that. So you'll never know unless you do your research. So that's another reason why I, you know, you, got, you can't really trust these companies that are putting out these products, uh, even if they put a nice flashy, fancy sticker on top of it, so. Uh, wait, Erica wants to know, what about hemp oil, Matt? How do you feel about hemp oil? Yeah, hemp oil would be good. Okay. Of course, any of these, I would say only consume organic oils because fats are much more, um, you know, they attract the toxins much more. So if they are not organic, they are likely to have higher levels of contaminants. I did not know that. Wow. Okay, guys. Um, so I can't scroll up. So I don't know. Instagram is really fucking with me lately. So it is what it is. But I guess we're going to wrap it up. Matt, is there anything else that you'd like to answer? I don't know if there's any questions or if you'd like to say anything. I guess you're the host, so this is not my job. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, no, I figured you'd take it over. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. I, I was going to say something before. Um, what was that last question? Do you remember? The last question? Oh, before, before this, before you asked me about the oil. Yes. So the last question was... Uh, is flax, oh, what's wrong with eating too many dates? Oh, yeah. Is flaxseed oil not good in your opinion? And then I just... Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so I was just watching a webinar from doctors Rick and Karen Dina, and they were talking about this concept, you know, of, of eating too much fruit um, and why it's important to have a good balance of fruits, vegetables, you know, those sorts of things. Um, and so they did a comparison, a nutrient comparison of a, an all fruit um, smoothie, I think, of like t 10 bananas or something. And they listed out the nutrients that were in there. Then they took, uh, uh, like, they took away two of those bananas and, or three of those bananas or something. And they put in a, a head of lettuce with the smoothie, right? So then it's the bananas plus the lettuce. And all, the nutrient profile was just so much better right? More, more well-rounded. Um, and so then they took um, a little less banana and they put in some, the lettuce and then some other vegetables. And that really gave you a full spectrum of all these different minerals and micronutrients that you don't necessarily get high levels of just from eating fruit. And so that's why I do believe it is important to I mean, fruit, I, I think, definitely is the, the staple, the foundation of our diet. It's the center, the core. But then having leafy greens, getting a good amount of leafy greens in and some other vegetables, I do think is important for long-term health to make sure you're getting all of your nutritional needs met. Um, because, of course, you know, the fruits that we're getting in the stores, uh, they, they aren't the best quality. And so we might not be getting the full spectrum of all those nutrients that we would if we were eating tree ripened fruits, um, you know, high quality fruits. So, um, you know, I would say that is one thing to keep in mind is that when you're only eating a certain small variation of foods, you could potentially be missing out on important nutrients that the body requires. Yeah, I mean, that was really well said. I often think, Matt, about how are people surviving eating processed food? And like, I'm supposed to be worried about eating enough fruit and vegetables. I mean, I talked to you about this. I've talked to you about this before. Um, yeah. But just can you share it with everyone? Like, um, 
<laughs> I don't know what I'm asking. I guess I'm just trying to understand like why. Okay, so you're saying we need to eat a variety. Yes. Yep. That's optimal. So yeah, we're talking about good, better, and best. Right. 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 I understand. Hey, what's up, Kirk? Kirk, I haven't seen you for a while. It's awesome to see you here. Hi, Kirk. I don't know you, but <laughs> he, he's my man. Thank you for being here, Kirk. And okay, we had another question, but Matt, I can't scroll up. They won't let me see it. Oh, okay. Um, and it was hoopy, not not hoppy. I think it was hoopy mama, hoopy mummy. So come on, come on now. Okay, so what I want to say about that, Jeanette, is that, okay, yes, it's, it, we're not saying that you have to like be super, um, you know, analytical and like, anal about what you are, cons you know, getting a well rounded amount of different things, right? It, you don't have to be that focused on that. But if you want the best level of health, personally, this is just my belief, I, I don't have anything necessarily to, you know, show as proof, but well, you have a book. Of it. I, I do have a book. I do have a book. Yes, I should have put testimonials in there in the next edition. I will. Yeah. Um, the the vast majority of the evidence that I have seen shows that making sure that we're just, you know, getting a good variety in the diet, but you don't have to be super analytical and, you know, think of it in a way that's like unnatural. Does yeah. that make sense? Thank you. Okay. I, I will, I will uh, start to think like that because sometimes I get so, and this is a con of the raw food lifestyle. Sometimes I get so confused and I just don't know what is truth and what is not truth. And I swear this is one of the points that I wrote down, but I guess I didn't read it. Uh, wait, did I go over all of my five? Hmm, that's so weird. But anyway, basically I wanted to write down that you, sometimes you just can't know. You don't know what is, oh, I never did my number five, I guess. You don't know what the truth is. Oh, there you go. Not know you should eat fermented foods, seaweed, what kind of water to drink, nutritional yeast, oil or no oil, to see moss or not to see moss. That's the question, right? Like, um, we don't know because nobody around us is doing this stuff. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. There's so much conflicting information. Do I eat mono meals like Jeanette says? Or do I feed my microbiome like Matt says? I don't know anymore. And I'm Jeanette, and I'm, <laughs> you know, so how is anybody yeah. supposed to know? And it's because you're a pioneer. And pioneers, they are the one. They were born to transform the world and turn around their bloodline. And so it's, it's not easy. It is not easy. Yeah. You were born to inspire and be inspired and inspire everyone else. But that means you're going to have to do experiments. And, you know, I want you to see your life as, like, an amazing, great experiment. And you're gonna have to look dumb and you're gonna have to um, experiment and feel dumb and feel like you're not doing the right thing. But then you'll find what works for you. Listen, I eat mono meals all day, every day, okay? I'm not somebody that likes to put a million things in the smoothie. And I know some raw vegans that put 30 ingredients in their smoothie and they're mm. That's amazing. I stick to five ingredients or less for every single recipe. So like, honestly, Matt, some of your recipes have more than five ingredients. So you know what I do, guys? Because I love Matt's recipes. I just omit a few. Fuck it. I'm not scared of Matt. I'll do what I, I do what I want. Usually, you can omit the, the dates because he has a mm -hmm. lot of amazing dressings. And some of them some of them are five ingredients or less. But some of them, yeah. are, you know, six, seven, eight. And so just take the dates out. Uh, it takes one of the spices out. You know, do what you want. Yeah. That? Yeah, you know, that that's a good point. And, and that is something, honestly, that I do. Um, that is one of my focuses when I make recipes, because I agree, I'm, I don't like doing a million, you know, a recipe with a million ingredients in it. You know, I think it is important to not overload the body at one time. So I would agree with you on that. Um, at the same time, from from my point of view, I would say yes, we, we should eat simple, but also we should eat balanced and so that we can you know feed the microbiome while staying simple and giving the body the least you know amount of work possible to digest and get all that stuff done so yeah yes maggie you must get this book absolutely click the link in matt's bio and you will get it and if you're watching on youtube click the link below and you will get it and it will be one of the best books and matt i'm so upset i messed up this episode because i was tired
But that was my number one. And it was so important to me because it really it's it's like the number one hardest thing for me, uh, like mm. not what the truth is, you know, and um, I just want to end by saying that the reason why it's so hard is because you have stopped believing the lies. Okay, everybody else believes the lies. So it's easier for them to live. They don't have to make their own decisions. Okay, society makes their decisions for them. What you can what is safe to eat and what's not safe to eat. If it's sold in a store, it's good. Okay, if it's recalled by the FDA, it's bad, you know, for like a day or two. And it's like us and everybody watching this who cares about their health and who's thinking for themselves, this that's like what I don't know what to believe. I don't know because it's like not common knowledge and there's not a lot of resources, but there is Matt's okay, this is it. This is <laughs> there is Matt's book and also my course, you know, why not? Listen, I have a six week course that will really help you, especially if you're struggling with starting. Somebody just asked for some raw vegan recipes, get Matt's, Matt's book and also my course, click the link in my bio. Um, and then what works best for digestion is raw food. Absolutely, absolutely, because yeah. it's not denatured and we're the only species on planet earth, okay, that cooks our food. We're also the only species that gets these preventable diseases, and that is destroying the planet. There's a reason. We destroy our food, we destroy the planet, and the animals and the other humans. We love our food, we eat beautiful, uh, bright colored, amazing, delicious fruit. By the way, my grapes spilled everywhere. There's grapes everywhere. Um, <laughs> and we will become that, uh, like Matt said in the last episode. That's well, be careful, because I used to work in a grocery store and slipping on grapes was the number one reason for injury for customers. So <laughs> dangerous. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, All right. So, so yeah, great, great points. And yeah, I, I do think when you're trying to find the truth, you, you know, you do have to be a pioneer. You do have to look at all angles. You have to listen to both sides and you have to use your intuition. You know, that that's my, guiding principle is to use your intuition and are, are you taking drinks every time i um no. say intuition or okay you're at i didn't five. know how much i should say you're at five you went a very long time somebody asked about water distillers i don't know if you've oh. ever heard of distilled water you know i i've heard of them um you know they're i, I think they yeah yes i i would recommend <laughs> a pure if you know it depends Okay, so definitely I would recommend distilled water. We could do a whole episode on water um, and why I believe distilled water is the optimal type of water yep, that we can consume uh, in today's world because it is so toxic and we are so saturated with farming chemicals, industrial waste, chemtrails, you know, pesticides and fertilizers and uh, all these different destructive chemicals that are putting getting put into our environment that's why i wouldn't get water directly from a spring unless it's somehow purified um you could do that and then distill it i would do that um but i i just don't think that one i don't think we're supposed to be getting in that many inorganic minerals i think they cause obstruction in the body and i wouldn't take in a lot of the chemicals that are in there because it is just a soup of poison so as uh, Kirk said, I, he thinks that the water we're drinking is poisoned. I agree. I think it is too. I, I don't think it is. I know it is. You know, I mean, if you cannot look around and see we are being intentionally poisoned, you know, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I wish I had those rosy glasses that you're wearing. But uh, yeah, what do you think, Jeanette? I think we should do a whole episode on distilled water. I think that somebody uh, said we should do more lives. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I think that um, we should wrap it up. Uh, distilled yeah. water versus alkaline. Listen, we're going to do a whole episode. But Matt says distilled. Yes, right? definitely. And Matt knows more about water than me. I want to, uh, last thing I'll say, I promise, Matt, is that <laughs> I want to remind everyone how amazing they are. And I want to also let them know that it's not as hard as you think. It is not as hard as you think it will be. What am I talking about? Everything. Everything is harder before you know how to do it, okay? If you wanna go raw, if you wanna get healthy, if you wanna get fit, like us, okay, okay, <laughs> didn't know, okay. <laughs> you didn't know we were gonna do that. <laughs> but um, if you want to just change your life, 
mood, skin, whatever it is, it's not as hard as you think it will be. And every single I can't is actually an I haven't. That's awesome. Mm. Well said, well said. Okay, well, everybody, thank you so much for coming to the gun show. Um, <laughs> she's been here all week. You can message her for, for new bicep pictures. Um, <laughs> and we did not get to every single question. So, I mean, there's been ones popping in and out. Um, Good job, Matt. I, I know. I, I've written down most of them here that we're going we're gonna to get to eventually. Oh, yeah. um, oh. What's that? Oh, you wrote them down. Oh yeah, I'm typing nope. as much as I as much as I can see here. Um, Kate Williams says she needs to get a tattoo saying "Choose your heart." Hmm. Girl, you better! Oh my God, you better tag me in that. That is, I want to get the word "relentless" so hmm. bad. It's my favorite word, and I want it big right here. But um, the the heavy metal, the metals in the toxic, I have two tattoos, guys. I won't get another one, unfortunately. I did have a dream. Uh, let's do a whole episode on this, Matt. I had a dream of getting little fruit tattoos all over me. It's, it's not gonna happen. I can't, it's very unhealthy. They actually did an autopsy with somebody that had a lot of tattoos and inside their liver, it looked like a rainbow. All mm. accumulating in their liver. I don't exactly recommend tattoos unless you wanna get a, a cute little small one watermelon or like I wanted to get a banana peel here I thought it was really cute but yeah. yeah yeah I agree I've always wanted one but again I I I didn't want to put the the inks in my skin so uh you know what do you do I just gotta be awesome without it so anyways <laughs> all right again thank you everybody if we somehow missed your question which I hope we didn't, but if we did, please either send us, either one of us, a DM, and we'll get to it next time, or we'll just answer you privately. Um, otherwise, yeah, we thank you for joining us uh, for another episode of the Raw Misfit Show, uh, my favorite time of the week to get to hang out with my partner and partner and Ryan. <laughs> and, uh, tattoo, bro. Let's get matching <laughs> tattoos. Partner and Ryan. We should. We should. Incredible. Yeah. So Jeanette, always fun to hang out with you. Thank you for being awesome and, and sharing your wisdom with everybody and everybody else. We will see you next week. Do we have a topic for next week yet? Matt, we just finished this week. Can I arrive <laughs> at the end of this episode? All right, all right, sure, fine. All right, guys, well, stay tuned. Stay tuned because we will come out with the next topic uh, in, in a few days and we'll let you know what you can expect and uh, how many bicep curls you're going to see Jeanette doing in next week's episode. All right. So thank you again. And also, everybody, Jeanette has a watermelon workout coming out. Um, it's not out quite yet, right? It's coming out. Very difficult for me to promote that. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> I do. And it, I'm not fit yet. But guess what? We're going to get fit together in the workout, guys. So thank you, Matt, yeah. for coming out soon to be determined. Thank you so much. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys. Thank you again. And we will see you in the next uh, episode uh, next Saturday at 12. Thank All you. Right. Bye, Matt. Bye. Bye, guys.